about our electrical system. Please forgive me if you can't hear me, just let me know because I'm having throat problems. There's three ways that we get electric power into our RV. That's automotive, 12 volt. It's by the converter or battery and shore power, 120 volt. Shore power, which is a marine term, is means the 120 volt that you plug into on the power panel or home or whatever. That supplies 120 volts to your RV, your outlets, your air conditioner, your refrigerator, uh, oh, the microwave, some water heaters, your TV, that sort of thing. And then it also supplies to the converter, which converts the 120 to 12. Are you trying to follow along? I'm reading that a different one. <laughs> Why would you do that? How <laughs> <laughs> come you get into the cave? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> First That happened when I got out of bed. The, uh, yeah, the converter, turning it to 12 volts, that runs all of your interior lights, uh, runs all the motors, runs your uh, furnace. Um, it, uh, well, refrigerator, kind of. If you have a 12 volt part of your refrigerator, those are not good to use. We're starting to see less and less of that being made now. Three way refrigerators that have a 12 volt function. Uh, your slides, power jacks, uh, monitor panels, your radio, it's all run by 12 volt. Okay. Assuming you're going to be traveling somewhere, you're going to park somewhere. Uh, you have a power cord, but you're going to be plugging into a power panel. You got a picture of a power panel on the thing here. This is not really your typical power panel, but this one in the picture has everything on it. It's got 50 amp, 30 amp, 15 amps, loads of circuit breakers. You're not always going to see that. So you want to look at the end of your plug, you want to see what kind of <coughs> amperage you have, and your plug tells you that. If it's a 50 amp, it's going to have four prong. One thing you must understand, even though it looks like a dryer plug or a range plug, it is not 220 volts. There is no 220 volts in any RV. It's all 120. These are 120 volt line. 120 volt line and separated by this neutral and then there's a ground. <coughs> in, a lot of, in a lot of cases they're wired so that the, the 120 split off. We've had people <coughs> put these electrical boxes on their house, call an electrician, he sees the plug, he wires it 220. <laughs> Guy plugs in we get the phone call. <laughs> Pretty close to being struck by lightning. I mean, it just smokes a lot of things. Anyway, if you ever have a box put on, please tell the electrician what it is. Don't tell him, you know, don't let him assume that it's a 220 volts. Another thing you must be careful about. Whenever you plug in, especially if you have 50 amp, turn the breaker off, then plug in. If you go to plug in one of these things while it's hot, and it's a tight fit, and you start rocking it, you can cause the neutral to die, which will give you 220 volt shot real quick. You've had that happen before. on the 30 amp and a 50 amp, um, the, the 15 amp, sometimes you're going to end up uh, having to plug into a 15 amp, which is 
your regular household plug, like that. You'll have, you'll be, you may even have a 50 amp plug in this uh, cute little quaint campground out in the middle of nowhere as a 15 amp household plug. You're going to have to be extremely cautious on what you use while you're there. <laughs> This is a good reason to pass this around. This is a 50 amp adapter, 50 to 30. They plugged in their 50 amp, poured off of their motor home, plugged into a 30 amp outlet, started using air conditioners and microwaves and coffee pots, all that stuff all at once. And then it's got to be, what's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> it's the box, it's on fire. You'll see on that, the male end of it, what happens, it begins to melt. <coughs> I have a news story. Uh, about a um, fifth wheel that caught fire. And um, a shed that caught fire on a rural farm. The guy was doing work on a farm. Parked his fifth wheel out in the back. He then proceeded to bring hundreds of feet of household electrical extension cords, <laughs> like he used for Christmas lights, from the fifth wheel to the electrical shed. And it says when they arrived on the scene, they found white smoke and fall small flame coming out of the RV. They quickly disconnected the electrical extension, which was, that's what it was causing. It was, it was at the, the RV caught fire, and it was a total loss, and the shed where it plugged it in, about two acres that way, caught fire. <laughs> so that's what you have to be extremely cautious about when you're making these multiple connections for power. <clears throat> um, again, you want to, any, any a simple rule, as it's written here, anything that generates heat or cold will pull a lot of amperage. That's going to take a lot of power. Microwaves, coffee makers, Blow dryers, portable hair. Uh, <laughs> portable electric heater, water heaters, toasters, air conditioners. Uh, your furnace doesn't pull much because a furnace is 12 volt. That runs off of 12 volt. You overdo your uh, electrical power, you're going to pop a circuit. That sounds like someone snapping a twig. You'll hear that, and then the lights go out. So that'll be a breaker in your breaker box. A breaker generally can be two ways. This is a converter, which has a series of breakers will be mounted in the converter on one side, and. If you have a different type of converter, you'll have a separate distribution <coughs> channel. But you know, familiarize yourself in your RV where it's at so you'll know where that snapping noise came from. So make sure when you go to plug in at the campground that you're off. Then plug in. Then if you don't have a panel at the campground, that has a, has a circuit breaker on it where you can turn off, then uh, turn your main off in your camper. Your main will be located inside your distribution channel. <coughs> then plug in, just in case you have some kind of an electrical problem. Are you taping this? Mm -hmm. Oh, I should be speaking. 